Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no one. As Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got questions in the corners of your mind. Traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find. Reflections of your old past, they seem to face you every day. This one thing I know for sure is Jesus is the way. Y'all know this song, sing it with me. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Amen. Above him there's no other. Cause Jesus is the way. I know you got mountains that you think you cannot climb. You say your skies are dark and you think the sun won't shine. Well, in case you don't know, I'm here to tell you that the word of God is true and everything is promised. I know he will do it for you. Stand up and sing it with me now. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no one. God. Let's pray as we usher in today's service. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Father, we present ourselves before you this evening, Lord, asking for your mercy in our lives of your glory. We pray, Lord, that we may be purged by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, we pray, Lord, that the blood of Jesus Christ may blot out every sin in us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you may have mercy on us, King of glory, for any trespass, O oh Lord, any wrong word that we made, any wrong thoughts, O oh King of glory, any wrong actions, so oh Father, forgive us, Lord. Make us holy and acceptable before the King of glory. We dedicate today's, today's service on thy hand, so oh mighty Father. We pray, Lord, that today's teaching is going to be, is going to, is going to be a very helpful to someone, O oh mighty Father. It's going to be a turning point to someone this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It is going to be a deliverance to someone today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we call upon your spirit in this service. We call upon your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Savior, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to sing a hymn, Redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem though his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, His children forever I am. Redeem, I'm so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can. Don't 
are so good, Lord, Lord. You are so good, so good, Lord. Blessed the name in heaven, in heaven you are. How great thou art, hallelujah, blessed be your name, hallelujah, for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Lift your name, hallelujah, for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. We lift your name, hallelujah, for the Lord and God For the Lord and God the Almighty reign, Lord you reign. Hallelujah! For the Lord and God the Almighty reign, our Father you reign. Hallelujah! For the Lord and God the Almighty reign, Lord you reign. Hallelujah! For the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Hallelujah for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Lord, you reign. Hallelujah for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Protector, you reign. Hallelujah for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. Lord, you reign. Hallelujah for the Lord and God the Almighty reign. My Lord, you reign. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reign. Lord you reign. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reign. Oh, we are serving the living God. We are serving the living God. We are serving the living God. Hallelujah.
to seek uh, direction from God. You need to be opened to more knowledge. You need more impartation from God. And then no. the people say no. Just a God. minute. No volume. Can you um, adjust the volume, please? Adjust the volume a bit. Uh, just a bit. Just a bit. All right. Good. Okay. Uh, so I will continue uh, with uh, with words of wisdom from yesterday. That also half the time people don't know they are passing through midlife crisis. So you may actually be passing through midlife crisis and you don't know that you are passing through it. And then uh, through midlife crisis, you need to be radical. You need to be radical. It's not time to be ordinary, but you need to be very radical to come out with solutions through uh, midlife uh, crisis. Again, we learned that through midlife crisis, you should look around you and you'll discover that uh, you're not the only one who is going through midlife crisis. As you go through midlife crisis, just have a look around you and you realize that actually you're not the only one who is going uh, through the crisis. We also learned that when you're going through midlife crisis, the people who know you before, the people you've hung around before, can be part of the cure through the midlife crisis. So that's one other thing that we need just to look around. The people you've been hanging around with, they can, they can be part of your cure. We also learn that when you're going through midlife crisis, you have to learn how to abase and abound. And we learn that no matter what happens to you, it is not the end of life. Many people take their lives uh, when they go through midlife crisis, but no matter what happens to you, it's not the end of life. Life has to go on. And uh, lastly, we learn that you should get closer to your spouse during midlife crisis. The spouses are the greatest assets we have when we go through midlife crisis. But then one of the challenge was even as the spouses are the greatest assets, at times they're also going through midlife crisis. So you need a balance of it. And then we went in to look at the timings of midlife crisis, and I'll just speak three or four. And uh, the ones that stood out for me is during seasons of failure, you are very prone to midlife crisis. During seasons of success, you are also prone to midlife crisis. During seasons of disappointments and also seasons of appointments, you are also very prone to midlife crisis and also during marriage. So there are quite a number. I've just picked a few. We went through 18 of them. So get yesterday's teaching and you'll be able to see all the indicators or the timings of our midlife crisis. Crisis. So that is what we learned yesterday. So, sir, what do you have in store for us today? Today we will be looking at characteristics of characteristics of midlife crisis, so that when it happens, we are able to identify that this is the midlife crisis we talked about. We are facing the characteristics. And uh, maybe for our viewers, we will ask you to share uh, the video. We uh, will be handling characteristics of midlife crisis. Just share it with your friends. Share it on your timeline. Start a watch party because today I believe the teaching is going to be very, very loaded. So share the video. And also, if you have any questions, you can post them on the chat box. And uh, as we proceed, we shall be able to attend and answer your questions. Uh, yeah, let's get to God's word in Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 to 12 Genesis chapter 4 verse 3 to 12 the first man to experience midlife crisis his name is called Cain the Bible says in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was wroth and his countenance fell. That was the beginning of midlife crisis. It was a transition period where they want to you know, attract the favor of God to themselves. 
So they did something to attract that favor. One was accepted, the other was not accepted, and he got depressed. Now, he got so depressed that his countenance fell. Instead of him discovering why did God not accept me, he got angry and he killed his brother. When midlife crisis, remember I said midlife crisis happens at transition period. When you want to transcend from one level, I don't know the level of favor they were commanding before God, before they decided, let us do some sacrifice to God so we can command better favor, so our life can be better. Then suddenly, they discover that his younger brother's offering was accepted, his own was not. If he was smarter, if he did not sleep to the negative part of midlife crisis, he would have gone to discover why is my brother's offering accepted and mine not. The guy got angry. His countenance fell. He became depressed. His depression led him to murder. He went to kill that guy. <laughs> when midlife crisis happens, especially when there is disappointment, the negative part of midlife crisis, many times people do not want to know what made them fail. They just want to run, either run away from that failure or attack somebody they think is succeeding in their stead. And then you see them become vengeful, bitter, and very vengeful. Well, how can this guy succeed? Am I? And I'm his elder brother. What's wrong? What, what, what was the problem? How can that be? The best would have been for Cain to go back and check what, what happened to me. How come my offering is not accepted? But he went after his brother that succeeded and killed him. And he incurred the wrath of God. <laughs> the more his life became more bitter than, in fact, became worse. Midlife crisis, when not well handled, can make our life worse. In fact, he attracted a curse from God. God declared him a vagabond and a fugitive. And that's what you see. Some people, when they are 40 or 50 and they fail, they start failing till they die. They end up becoming permanent vagabonds. You see them jumping up and down, smoking, drinking. You see them settled down, eating nyamachoma permanently. Sorry, nyamachoma is meat we eat in Kenya. <laughs> Roasted meat, yes, sir. They will be settled down in the bar for the rest of their life. They will sleep on the road. They can drink anything. Why? Because of a disappointment that they couldn't handle at a prime age when they think I should not have been disappointed. Sir, sir, sir that was a very important point. And I'm just trying to see, uh, you say that it's important to know what made you fall. So I don't know if maybe... Uh, our elder, if maybe you have some words. In fact, I was going to refer to him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me, let me, let me, powerful, powerful. I, I know I was on the set yesterday. Yes. And uh, just like you, viewer, I am looking forward to getting the nuggets of gold that will come from today's teaching uh, uh, because, because I, I, I believe it will be even greater than yesterday. It's, it's what comes from Cain's story and the explanation and, the, and that. well in, let me say in my younger life I experienced it I experienced it and it comes with the, it, it is brought by many reasons you know and for a child of God there is a reason why everything happened to somebody mm. why did you succeed in that particular effort or endeavor mm. but, uh, uh, you know you're supposed to find it in prayer in counseling and from the word of God but you see Cain was a believer in Yahweh but he didn't do that and uh, so he gave room to the enemy I think for me what helped me and that would have been a little younger in my Christian world was was uh, was uh, I read about midlife crisis a little earlier in high school and as I got to the university because I gave my life to Christ when there was a a revival in high schools and I think it was running across in Africa yes in Nigeria as well in the, in the, in the 70s coming on to 80s um, I, 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 I knew one thing that as a child of God nothing happens by mistake hmm. why haven't you succeeded have you not succeeded so that you can be downcast bitter angry and even jealous hmm. children of God jealous can attack you it's, jealous, it's yeah. done that in my life and I realized, hey, this is jealous. And it's not that God loves me any lesser than the one who was blessed. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, sir. Again, I want to show you another scripture 
Ahitophel in 2 Samuel 17 verse number 23 2 Samuel chapter 17 verse 23 uh, multimedia you, you guys have done a good job today the sound is I'm feeling the sound is sweet today God bless you guys 2 Samuel chapter 17 verse 23 the Bible says and when Ahitophel saw that his counsel was not followed he saddled his ass arose got him home to his house to his city and put his house in order and hanged himself and died and was buried in the sepulchre of his fathers this is another example of midlife crisis this man used to be an oracle in the days of david every of his counsel was like you are inquiring from the almighty god according to the bible the bible says when he speaks it's on the point that you don't need to, you don't know for an alternative one day he disconnected from david and connected with a rebel david's son and began to give david's son direction and the young man refused to follow the direction because david had already prayed in that he would not follow it the bible made us understand that he gave the young man a direction and the young man refused to take that counsel this pained him so much why he looked back he hold me i speak to your father your father runs and obeys me and i'm telling you and you're swelling up who do you think you are and then when he checked his credential over the years he had success stories as a counselor an advisor and then this small boy is insulting him by looking down on his counsel this made him so depressed that he left his official residence in the city center left his office in the city center traveled to his village wrote his will and hung himself midlife crisis he looked where do i start from <laughs> people ahead of you valued me and you are just coming the other day that made him feel so bad to the extent that he never saw his future anymore his past and the present disappointment be clouded him to the extent that he committed suicide many times when people fail suicidal thoughts come that is mid life crisis why because you wonder where do i start from have you seen ladies that are jilted because the guy said i'm not doing it again they said fine let me die i don't need to live anymore some even go mad they go completely mad some men you see them go mad they start walking on the road they go bonkers they lose their composure they lose their standard life and they begin to do things anyhow and then some of them begin to operate with anger look at this man he took a a well respected man in israel a man whose words were like law when he speaks everybody trembles including king david he got so depressed about what absalom did to him and he went to hang himself so midlife crisis can lead to suicide yes sir so, uh, one important thing i'm getting from the story of ahitophel is that he wasn't used to disappointment so maybe that, that was the key so uh when it hit him it hit him real hard because he had never been disappointed before <laughs> so maybe what can you now maybe encourage our viewers about how to handle or how to tackle disappointment especially if it's a very heavy disappointment and sir i believe you are very quite experienced in that area how maybe they can handle or be able to gear themselves so that when the disappointment hits them they, it really doesn't take them down just wanted to add the point that and yet it's a misunderstanding of the enemy in this life we we'll face temptations we we'll face trials the enemy will try to show change our our destinies yes you know it's how you and i respond to us to it that matters because because he was not used to disappointment he was a law you know when he speaks but everybody trembles but 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 one can even feel a sense of pride even yes. self pride it's pride arrogance you know an arrogance yes. that's what i said and, 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 and i have had christians have met people i'm trying to remember if there's a particular incident in, incident in my life particularly that thing of of pride and not knowing what this life entails yes our victory is won but still, we've got to fight for our own salvation, our own well-being, with fear and trembling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to say something very serious. I learned a lesson many years ago that every disappointment is an opportunity for a better appointment. It's settled in my spirit. 
every disappointment i don't like disappointments i don't celebrate it but i always know every disappointment is an opportunity for a better appointment if i'm disappointed now i will go and polish myself so that when i come for another interview a better appointment comes so that wherever i made mistakes i polish myself up and get it right and better than i got it the previous time and that mentality had helped me you know i applied to get to university five times in nigeria i could not for five years in fact the year i entered university was the year my mates in secondary school graduated from university in fact some of them graduated a year some graduated the, so those that their courses were five years they graduated the year i became year one student they finished year five they became graduates they had certificates i was just entering university <laughs> but i made up my mind i will be the best in this school no matter if i in those days i remember when they were on campus they would invite me to come and preach i would travel to their campus to preach and after i finished preaching releasing the anointing praying for the sick and they get healed students will ask me sir what campus are you in because our friend your, your friend had told us that you were classmates in secondary school i tell them i'm still looking for admission whoa it is demoralizing depressing they start asking me why did you go to this place ah what happened to you didn't you pass didn't you pass your exams why are you that dull uh, is something wrong with <laughs> and i feel so disgusted it like you know my self-esteem is being attacked but i be the anointing god used it to protect me in those days until i got to know that every disappointment is an opportunity for a better appointment and god actually did it when i finally got admission to university it is without qualifying exam when i entered university i came out the best in the university i came out with a powerful result i got the vice chancellor's award i got the faculty award i got the departmental award because i was not the mate of the students there we were not mates <laughs> we were not at all they were junior to me so i made up my mind i cannot ridicule myself among these small children so i worked so hard that i was just having my ease regularly i was a leader in the christian setting i was a leader in the pol any angle in fact while i was a student 18 campuses around the area where i was a student was sub 18 campuses of christian union were submitted to me they would come to my house to consult me on any issue on their campus if there's any matter i'll drive to their campus to go and settle it then come back to my own campus i was like an elder <laughs> and it worked out for me at the end of everything get, i was i got scholarship for masters got scholarship for phd because of performance now if i entered university when i was younger i may not have gotten that scholarship i may not have gotten all those awards why because i may never have gotten those awards because uh I, you know being childish youthful exuberance could have taken place could, could have taken over me now because of what happened to me i became very serious the opposite side the flip side of um, um midlife crisis when you switch it to the positive it pushes you to become better than you were before what what, what a powerful <laughs> word what a, i mean i mean for the listener <laughs> I am here alive. We yes, are here alive because for us it's coming life. Yes, sir. But I'm just thinking, it may be that marriage was not intended for this year or last year. Yes. But it is coming. <laughs> you know? That appointment. Yes. It may be God wanted you to mature. Learn some more lessons. Yes, get some more lessons, get more grounded. Yes. It may be. That's what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. sir. You know, it's, it's, not that, it's not that the God never intended you at all to have that job or that appointment yes sir or that conference in fact two days ago i said i said i'm going to show a little bit the tip of the iceberg of what will happen on sunday on sunday i'll be talking about the cure to midlife crisis so i said but i'm going to give you a tip of the iceberg one the first strongest cure to midlife crisis is maturity maturity i became more mature to handle campus i became more useful to the university to the universities around vice chancellors consulted me when students began to have unrest they said there's a young man his name is eric get him on board he knows how to address them so i'll appear there and say i will talk like a comrade and i tell them now relax guys we're not going to fight this way we're going to take it this way they say, yeah yeah man yeah man <laughs> i was older than them so i knew what to say they followed me and that is the end of many crises in fact i did 40 crusades against campus cultism traveling from one campus to the other speaking to a large number of students because of exposure experience maturity i was not their mate from 
the place I will rush back to my own campus and I will see passing my exams. Because I knew how to manage my time because I've suffered before. Once beaten, many times shy. <laughs> yes, sir. I didn't want to fail anymore. Now, uh, this is interesting because yes, we, we learned about uh, Moses the other day, Moses, Abimelech, Sarah, and then now we are on a hippopel. So do you have any other scripture or now should we go into the meat of the matter? No the way, G. Judas Iscariot committed suicide. Okay. Midlife crisis. He thought he had reached the peak to the extent that he could control Jesus. Matthew 27, 3 to 5, you find where he's committed suicide. The Bible says one day, Jesus, a certain woman came to Jesus and broke the alabaster box. And raised the camera a little bit more and focus on her face, the main camera. And focus on our face, the main camera, please. Always do that. Don't pick the TV. You make it too high. Because I watched the yesterday's one and that's why I'm correcting you now. All right. Follow that instruction strictly so I don't get distracted while I'm teaching God bless you. Now, um, one day, a certain woman broke alabaster box and poured the oil on Jesus, and everywhere was smelling. The Bible says, Judas Iscariot rebuked Jesus and said, Why? With indignation. If you read that place in the Bible, say, With indignation. And said, Why are we wasting this stuff? We are supposed to sell it for some serious shakers of whatever, and then we are giving the money to the poor. Jesus said, The poor you have with you always. Allah had to do that because it's for my burial. The Bible says Judas Iscariot took offense, left, and went to start negotiating on how to sell Jesus. Now, why did Judas do that? Let us not think that he's a demon. No. Let's think now that he's a human being. The reason is he believes that he had commanded so much authority around, around Jesus that he could rebuke him. So when Jesus gave it back to him, he got angry. He me. Your treasurer, do you know who I am? What an insult. I fired Jesus in public. He should say, okay, okay, that's my treasurer. He has power to say what he said. He's one that calculates the money. So he knows, so let's just forgive him. But Jesus said, stop that nonsense. The poor you have with you always. She did that for my burial. Jesus gave it to him very well. I don't know whether Jesus was shouting. Uh, I don't know how he said it. But the Bible says he left there with anger and started negotiating how to sell Jesus. Why he felt disappointed. He felt, how can Jesus belittle me? A whole treasurer. The one in charge of the money of Jesus' ministry global. Worldwide. So that is pride also like you said it. So that moved him to go and sell Jesus. He thought maybe Jesus would beg him at some point. I said, please don't sell me. <laughs> or maybe Jesus would disappear. But when he saw that they started beating Jesus up. And started wounding him and giving him the cross to carry. He regretted it. If you read that scripture, Matthew 27, 3 to 5, there was it Judas, which had betrayed him, when, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, he repented because he never believed Jesus could get to a level of condemnation. He thinks it's either Jesus begs me or Jesus disappears because he has power to disappear. But he saw that they were not condemning him. The Bible says he repented and he brought again the 30 pieces of silver. To the chief priest saying i have sinned in that i betrayed an innocent lord and they said what is that to us see thou to it they chased him away the bible says he cast down the piece of silver in the temple and departed and went to hang himself why midlife crisis he believed he had gotten to a certain status that jesus cannot rebuke him when jesus rebuked him he he he, he sold jesus that's the beginning of mid midlife crisis makes people get angry to an extreme to an extreme that they think that they have rights to. And then sometimes they took it overboard. This guy took it overboard until he committed suicide. When he discovered that what the damage he had done is irretrievable, he decided to die. That's why you see some people at the age of 40, they want to die. 50, they want to die because they think damage is done. It cannot be repaired anymore. That is midlife crisis. <laughs> wow. And uh, sir, maybe you can just check if you have new people online and you can invite them as we now go into the characteristics of midlife crisis. All right, we have um, Sister Sarah online. Sister Sarah Mijabi, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Dalma Centero, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Moses Karuanda, he said, Every disappointment is an opportunity for a greater appointment. You are right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Grace Israel Okiri is online. The Lord bless Pastor Grace and four others. Mm -hmm. Lenuta Dragisi is online from Scotland. The Lord bless you, man. Thank you for joining us. 
uh, please share the video so that many others can join share it like five times each person so that others can join us to get blessed hallelujah praise god i thank you sir so maybe now I i'm not here ready to go into the points no, because there are things in the scripture we need to pull out yes, before we now get to those points those points will just wind it up sir if you watch many people when um, you get to a certain level you don't okay the bible also told us that we should respect the elders but i have learned some lessons in life because one day when i was young i saw our pastor then i don't want to mention his name rebuke a certain elder in the brutal dimension sir, and suspended him in the presence of everybody and it was a massive church fear entered our hearts <laughs> So I was wondering, can I pass through this? I discovered that the more we grow older, the more flexible we should become, or else life can break us into pieces. When we were having a deal concerning this land, I saw somebody speak to you very rudely. And I saw the way you took it. Until this deal was over, somebody else would have walked out of the deal. At what level? I'm not a beggar. <laughs> But I saw the way you kept on. You kept on managing it. Kept on managing it. At some point, if you sue the guy, the guy will go to jail because he defamed your character. But I discovered that growing up should make us more flexible than rigid. If you grow up and you don't become flexible, life can break you into pieces. Especially when somebody junior to you fires you. <laughs> it can break you into pieces. And that the kind of midlife crisis you find yourself in you might not be able to recover from it that was what happened to judas iscariot happened to ahitophel now in the case of samson samson's own he believed he was a champion every lady should marry him the bible says to us that he went to marry a lady lion roared at him that was the beginning of me i was wondering so where's my wife where's my wife the bible says in chapter 16 this happened in chapter 15 in chapter 16 he went to a harlot and slept with the harlot he woke up from the harlot's house and uprooted the gate of the city because people were waiting for him there after that he went to the valley of sorek where his life wrecked permanently finally why because he felt disappointed i paid dowry they didn't give me my wife in fact all women are in trouble and they went a while he could not achieve his desire he looked back so where do i start from i've already paid dowry so there's i don't have time to look for another lady again let me go to a cheap one that he doesn't even need dowry he went to a harlot <laughs> from there he started going down until they removed his eyeballs that is what happens when disappointment set in at a particular age when you think you have done all to succeed may god help us <laughs> because it happens to everybody is there any time you've, you've been disappointed in life before? Am I right, sir? Yes, 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 I have. I have. And I reacted without what you called as a flexibility. That one needs to be flexible. Yes, sir. But added to that is a measure of wisdom hmm. comes along with that. And you look at the person who is your junior or younger than you. Doing well. Yes, doing well. Or you look at the person whom you otherwise have come down on them with mallet and hammer and you get to know i wish they knew and jesus kept saying i wish you knew and because of that you're forced to be flexible patient tolerant because even if you have not been pronounced that person has not said to you i want you to mentor me hmm. by virtue of you being an elder an older maybe a father their pastor their elder their guardian you're mentoring them already I, I i have passed through that i i i think on many occasions in my earlier life Child. on many occasions not, not just one before i learned hey you know hey it's it's it's, it's not like that yes and, and i got what i said i said it's a how we react to disappointments or disappointments that are brought by you yes sir thanks so i think i'm um, I'm, I'm, I'm boiling to hear the characteristics. So are we there yet? No, we are not there yet. <laughs> okay, so give us most scriptures. In Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 14 to 18, 
Jeremiah 20, 14 to 18. I'm already putting out the characteristics from the scriptures. Fine. The last part is just to enumerate it. <laughs> I, just, I just had to put them out. All my points have just come from the Bible. Jeremiah 20, verse 14 to 18. The Bible says, Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. And let that man be as the cities with a lot of a tree. <laughs> this is what happens to a man when he starts regretting he was born, since he looked back and he cannot find anything to show that he came to this world. It always happens at from mid age to old age. People look back and say, ah, Why am I on earth? Look at all my mates have done great and mighty things. The other one is a governor, the other one is a president, the other one is a this and that one. What have I achieved? Cost me the day that I was born. That's what makes people feel like killing themselves. The other day, sir, you remember the lawyer that killed himself, that killed his wife, killed his children, and killed himself in Nairobi. Right in Nairobi here. The other one jumped into a moving vehicle so he can smash him into pieces. He probably looked around and he couldn't find anything to, this, you know, to buttress his life. And he wondered, why am I here? Look at Ahitophel. He wondered, he hold me. I spoke to this small boy. Didn't he? What nonsense. I think I should leave this world. <laughs> the whole Judas looked at me that carry a whole money for Jesus, the Son of God. And I'm talking, they are not respecting. Who do they think? And he went to kill himself. So, now, in this place, Jeremiah began to show us how people look back and begin to curse the day they were born and regret they ever came to this world. It starts at midlife. When people are young, they don't even remember that somebody gave out to them or they are going to die one day. They are always jumping up and down until it downs on them, especially when one of their friends begins to achieve great things. Or when somebody asks them, how old are you? And the answer, I am 50 years old. <laughs> And they look at you and say, 50, you are still like this. They will start thinking, whoa, it means I missed it in life. <laughs> because who are you means what have you achieved. It could mean, um, well, it can also be an insult. <laughs> Depending on what you have achieved. It could mean well done. If they look at you at 40, you have done mighty things. And they say, how old are you? And they look at what you've done. You'll be proud to say who, who, how old you are. But when you have not done mighty things at 40, and they say, how old are you? You'll be ashamed to tell them your age. It now looks like an insult. So, so sir, this regret looks like it comes really when you are comparing yourself uh, with your peers. You are comparing yourself with those who have got ahead of you. And maybe our elders, sir, we may want just to draw again from your wisdom bank. Have you gone into places where now you are comparing yourself amongst your peers and maybe you feel as if they have done better than you and maybe that makes you come into a midlife crisis or has it all been smooth sailing? Uh, uh, <laughs> I've done that. You know, you know I, I, I have done that. Um, <laughs> I, I have a classmate of mine who, who is now a judge of the Supreme Court. You know, I thought to myself, well, that guy even used to beat me in class. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. I think this particular one beat me. He got a, he got a first class owner. So. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying God has not blessed me. He's blessed me in many ways. He is. Uh, in, 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 in the past, in some of those moments, I would sit back and think, I, I, I know of people ahead of me in government. Enter into state house and come out like it's uh, the back of the house. The back of the house. But God has always reminded me and drew my attention to what He has done also for me. Great privileges, great helps, and and I don't know how that will come either on Sunday or before then, whereby one needs also to sit back and take stock. And if if Cain had done that, if if others had done, they would have seen what God had done for them. Mm, and true. this is something we fail from doing. This is something we fail from doing. Apart from understanding that every disappointment is an opportunity for appointment. Yes. We also fail to see, look, and, and I, I believe this is where Eli, Elisha had to pray. It was Elisha that he suffered be opened. This time it was to see the chariots were there, that were there. 
But God needs to open our eyes. For me, that prayer, that prayer, that the eyes of your inner man, being open to see what God has made for me, given me a family, kept me, sustained me. I am, you know, like in, when, when I've been involved in political campaigns and I come out of them, I have my Father who is in heaven in my life, I have my faith, I have my God. I mean, what would it have profited me if I was successful? And I came out like a lot of my colleagues because out there, out there, evil spirits and wickedness play football, Premier League, <laughs> Premier League in campaign. Men and women, particularly if you're a man, women come and they won't come. Ooh, you need many coverings of the Holy Spirit, not just one age, <laughs> like of Job. You need many ages. Yes, yes, yes I have. Yes, sir. Okay, in Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Paul said, For Demas, Second Timothy 4, verse number 10, For Demas are forsaking me, having loved this present world, and is departed to Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, and Titus have also gone to Dalmatia. From here you discover that he said, Demas forsook Paul. Why? Because he fell in love with the present world. What happened? Let's get to reality. What happened to Demas that he forsook Paul? Demas must have thought that Paul is an elder. Paul must have lived his life and he chose to live a very hard life preaching the gospel. Me, I'm still young. I'm still in my middle age. And this elder is telling us to pray every morning. Pray every night. Pray every night. I, I have not enjoyed my life. I feel trapped. I feel I am not where I should be. I am supposed to be playing football around first before we start doing this elder's work. <laughs> and Demas disconnected. And fell in love with the world and went to wear jeans earring in one ear paint his mouth check what it is to watch pornography sag his trouser having loved this present world attend some parties eat some meet somewhere dance in some party he fell in love with the present world you see midlife crisis makes us think life is passing us by and suddenly we're becoming an elder I have not enjoyed my youth. Let me go back to becoming a youth. That is why you see a, an old man trying to be a small boy again. That's why you see an old woman trying to be a young lady again, trying to paint her mouth, make up, wear tight jeans, you know, walk on the road so that people can say, Mama, you are looking. I said, Don't call me Mama, call me my name. My, her name could be, let's assume her name is Susan. She's going to call me Susie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, maybe, maybe her name is Tabita. She said, Call me Tabby. You know, don't even put the Y, put I E Tabi. <laughs> and you see, I said, No, 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 don't, don't, uh, don't mama me. I'm not mama at what age? Excuse me, I'm still very young. I'm young at heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see, the person dye the hair now instead of blood, barb it, arrange it. I'm an African queen, you know, start dieting to become slimmer so that, you know, she can fit in when small girls are around. You know, try to attend meetings where small girls show off. She also goes there to show off that it's, I'm still intact. Everything is still intact. I'm still very balanced. And some people now go for, you know, um, 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 some plastic surgery for every part of their body to make it wake up again. Why? Because something is telling them life is going away you have not enjoyed your youth enough then maybe they remember maybe they were in the village when they were they were youth so they believe they didn't enjoy the city life of youth being a youth so they now want to enjoy the city chapter of youthfulness because in the village they were just running up and down fetching water and fetching firewood now they want to you know be young girls again now this was what happened to demas and demas for support one of the things is this the bible says godliness with contentment is great gain this one of another key to solving midlife crisis is contentment you know one guy looked at me one day when i was i was on campus here doing my master's degree he looked at me said you're a pastor i said yes you're a pastor he said look at how handsome you are i'm they're talking to me sir look at how handsome you are so you don't have any girlfriend 
you don't drink, drink, you don't smoke. You are just punishing yourself and wasting this handsomeness at this tender age. Don't you know it's old people that should be passed? On? Anyway. <laughs> to, the, to the handsomeness, we should say amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, <laughs> that's I'm for that's for, for Pastor Grace. <laughs> I'm telling you, sir. But to the other things, hey, the man lost it. <laughs> so I looked at him and I laughed and I said, I am better than any of my mates. I know that. I am so satisfied with the way I'm behaving. He said, you don't enjoy life. You don't eat meat. Kukuchoma, namachoma. And, and you know, people love meat in Kenya. <laughs> he told me, you don't eat meat. You don't go to the bar to eat meat and take some... He did his hand like this. He said, so, you're just wasting away. He said, leave this pastor job for old people. They've already enjoyed their life. Then they can help pastor. So I said, no, I'm content. Because, see, when you are sick, you come to me. When I pray for you, God heals. So God passes through me to touch your life. I am very content. And that contentment makes me proud of myself. I wasn't depressed. And by the grace of God, I came out with distinction. It's a master's degree. He was amazed. I'm doing well. Now, if I was not content, I would have felt depressed that day. That he told me that there are fine girls in the class who even likes me. And I didn't even know. And I'm doing pastor. We are suit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when you are not content, midlife crisis can catch up with you in one minute. When somebody just insults you, or persecutes you, or just refers to you as somebody who is not updated in the worldly realm, oh, you forget your Christianity. That's why you, you, need, you need somebody. You need, you need a father, you need a pastor, you need uh, uh, you need fellow brothers in church and sisters if you are married and this is where a spouse becomes very important as you share with them for prayer yes. as you ask for prayer they remind you it's the vision things, yes the vision and some things god has done for you so that while you think you're forsaken your classmates have become this you are not there yet you have tried you know some some some, some are not even followers of jesus christ uh, 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 some will be Muslims by faith, you know, and they say they don't even worship my God, you know, or they, I, you know, and there they are, though. you know, you would have a reason to, to, somebody else needs to remind you. Okay, granted, sometimes people forget, people forget, and that's why it helps be in fellowship, that's why it helps be in church, that's why it helps, you know, that spouses listen to each other, we were talking about spouses yesterday. My wife has reminded me a number of things. Uh, I, I've also reminded her. I've also known something we've been praying for and saying that God star yes. kings, you in know. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and, and, and I have found myself, hey, I have found myself, I was going to say, most of the time she has encouraged me. Yes, this time I found myself. <laughs> encouraging her. <laughs> you know, you know. Yes, sir. There must be a reason. And yes, when sir. it comes out, it will come out there. Sir, my spiritual father helped me in so many ways one day i went to his camp to see him he was just telling me a story he said one of his uncles heard that he had built a camp christian camp where you can pray fast do many things do many major meetings so he said that his uncle came and said you build a camp i never knew you succeed can you ever succeed and then he went to the tap and opened and water came out of the tap. oh so there's ball hole they said yes there's ball hole there. He went to the light and switched on and saw light. Oh, so there's light here. His uncle, the, that man never believed anything good can come out of him. He said to me, he said, Eric, look at me. I said, sir. He said, you may be slow while you are serving God, but you end up becoming the ultimate that others will look up to at their old age. He said, don't be in a hurry. Amen. Your mates may Amen. be in a hurry to Amen. succeed, but the success it short lived amen but amen. your own will last mm. at old age you'll be coming to you for prayers both for sicknesses and also for god to help them because your own has lasted right hallelujah that and he showed me said nobody believe i will ever make it look at me now that thing encourages me if my father and the lord can make it i will make it right. so i stood strong amen. even when i came amen. to nairobi at some point, it was looking like ministry was not progressing. So you remember those prayers we pray in those days? Where are these? Where are members? Where are them? The church is not growing. What is going on here? But I, I am encouraged by what that man said. 
one day you will make it you discover those who are making it will not come back to you because see you may be late in life you end up the latest wow. that's what they may take a note of Gehazi made a major mistake because he was in a hurry the Bible says to us the uh, Naaman came and was cured of leprosy and as he was going Gehazi pursued him to go and collect the offering that his father did not did not collect why because he was in a hurry he wants to collect his salary if you remember when he returned back in the book you find that in the book of second kings 5 verse 20 to 27 when he returned back his pastor asked him is it time for you to collect salary why are you in a hurry you are still an apprentice and you already want a salary relax it will soon be your turn life is turn by turn i rejected the offering i'm the one who commanded this healing but I rejected the and you are not interested in what i rejected fine collect leprosy with it and the guy became leprous that is midlife crisis midlife crisis makes you feel you are out of time you will not be extremely in a hurry to catch up with what you think you've lost and many times you lose everything you end up catching leprosy <laughs> straight to catch up so sir uh, we have a question online okay and uh, we are being asked good evening sirs is it wrong for a person to take care of their looks at old age <laughs> Is it wrong for a person to take care of their looks at old age? Now, I will answer that question. No, I think Pastor Mara should answer it for me. <laughs> is, is it wrong if it's a man like me to get a clean haircut, to put some, uh, some ointment on myself? No, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. But if I turned up tomorrow for another set and I have a nearing, <laughs> a nearing, you know, or I turned up and I have uh, a low neck shirt and then uh, some ring rings, you know, I have five, five <laughs> rings on your finger. Earrings. I mean, and uh, you, you clearly say something, something isn't right. I'm telling you. <laughs> but, but I believe as Christians, and I know Apostle who put this, who pop something to this one. We are meant to be the best in everything. We are meant to be smart. We are meant to be, when we appear somebody, and, and you know, when we have Christ and the Holy Spirit, when we walk there, they not only see how we are shod, how we are, you know, dressed. They go view that the anointing and the Holy Spirit takes over. They see the God in us. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I know you have a different way of yes. it. Yes, sir. sir. Um, we are supposed to dress well even at old age okay to even attract our spouse so that your spouse does not start looking at others outside as better than you you must dress well to the extent that your spouse sees you and is inspired or she is inspired for example when, whenever i finish wearing my suit and i'm well dressed i see my wife come to look at me and say you look good I say thank you and i step out remembering what she told me if another lady tells me I look good, I remember she told me first. <laughs> that, as in, I am not carried away. Why? Because she told me. Ahead. Now, what we are talking about is when you now go to the extreme. Imagine now I go for plastic surgery to make my nose tall like this. So that girls will say, wow, your nose is shooting like an American. So, <laughs> so I can attract some girls. That's what we are talking about. When you go to the extreme... When I now go to, you know, reorganize my sh the shape of my hair with some machine. When I start spending some money that is not necessary to make my leg extremely straight. Organize the bones and all that. Maybe I think I have bow leg, though I don't have bow leg naturally anyway. But <laughs> I try to go and reshape it. Uh, some ladies will do tummy talk because they want to still belong. Now, you marry that man she was he was the one who manifested with you until your stomach became the way it is you give him back to like four or five children for him you can do exercise or whatever to organize yourself but now you have to go and cut some portion of your stomach to make it so that you can now be a small girl and you're doing like this and you're twisting with very hard bones that are already 56 years old <laughs> there's no need for all that so what we're talking about is when inferiority complex drives you to go and start becoming a beautician and start beautifying yourself to the extent that you now go off board now one of the presidents of nigeria some years ago his wife died 
because she was going to beautify herself. His wife died. If uh, he's, he's still alive, the man is still alive till now. He's, 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 he's one of the presidents of Nigeria in his days. His wife is already an old woman, more than 60 years old. She went to Italy or somewhere in Europe to go and reorgan to her, do tummy talk. This and that. another woman did it and said, See, young boys like me a lot now. And then she followed that woman to that place. And while she was doing the surgery and all the cutting and all the rearranging, she died there. She died. The man was not happy. In fact, the entire nation was not happy. It's shameful to say that it was just going to rearrange yourself that made you die. She would have lived longer if not for this midlife crisis. It was midlife crisis that drove her to her death. She would have lived longer and enjoyed more life and impacted more life the way she is. And in fact, her husband was not ready to divorce her. So why was she trying to do all that? She was doing that to impress, to feel belong. Midlife crisis can give you some assignment that God never gave you. Especially when you try to beautify yourself. I you believe know. you have answered that question well, sir. Yes, sir. So maybe I'll check maybe from my end if there's any other question. If there's no other question, maybe we can then uh, proceed. Okay. No, I don't think there's any that. I'm only seeing Dalma saying I'm getting the, the, the dose here. Chai. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. If you're online, please make a comment. Tell us what you've learned or what you've been gaining online. Just say something so we can know you're with us. All right. Now let me get to pinning it one by one. The things, uh, characteristics of midlife crisis. Number one, the first and most serious characteristic of midlife crisis is remembrance of your mortality. Remembering that one day you leave this world. That has brought the greatest depression to many people. And it has also inspired a lot of people positively. Whenever I remember that one day I will leave this world, you see me working hard to make sure that my existence is not like a wind or like a smoke. But it is imprinted in the sand of time till Jesus comes. So I begin to work hard. Some people, whenever they discover that, they are going to die one day. They get depressed. So time has gone. So that's how it will end. And they start thinking it's already over. It is not over until it is over. But many people refuse to remember that. Today I'm bringing it to you. and reminding you that it's not over until it is over. Until you breathe your last. You can still do many things. At the age of 80, God reinvented Moses. And he became uncommonly useful for the next 40 years of his life. The remaining last 40 years of his life was the best of his life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't look down on yourself and think it is over. That spirit of it is over. Oh, so I'm going to die shortly. So this is how I'm going to die. Wow. So I'm going to die. That depression, that spirit makes some people enter into midlife crisis and they start misbehaving seriously. And they let me eat all I can now. Let me can all I can now. Let me get all I can get now. And they become very dubious. They become very wicked. They begin to amass landed property. They begin to amass wealth. They start sitting on everything. They start making everything to be in their name so that they can feel good. Uh, no matter what you do, you will still die. Death is sure. But don't now let it make you forget who God made you to be. Hallelujah. All right. Number two is lack of accomplishments. Lack of accomplishments. When you feel you have not accomplished much, when you look back and there's nothing to show that you're around. I don't know how old Gehazi was. He looked back. He said, let me collect this money once and for all. <laughs> Many times, midlife crisis, when it strikes in the area of lack of accomplishment, it makes some people get very dubious. You will see old men cheating, forging and falsifying figures to acquire money loading the account with stolen money laundering money to make themselves rich because they feel they have not accomplished anything if i don't have money now when will i have it let me get it now because time is already passing by the next one is depression characteristics depression you always see them depressed not happy that was what happened to Ahitophel. He got depressed with me. He went to hang himself. The next one, number four, is remorse. They get very remorseful. 
they start regretting things that they did that they didn't do well or they think they didn't do well things that they would have done well i would have come out first in school what happened to my brain i would have married that lady why did i marry this one remorse that was what killed um this man judas iscariot anxiety is another one number five anxiety they get very anxious time is passing how many days do i have left three or four of my classmates have died it could be my turn anytime let me begin to manifest very quickly they get anxious when you waste their time they attack you they want everything done now they become impatient you wanted to say something yes sir. and i wanted to say we have mentioned the first five i just wanted maybe to call upon our elder if the, uh, there's remembrance of your mortality a lack of accomplishments depression remorse and anxiety that's the list of the first five so maybe out of those five the first five is there any that maybe sticks out to you that maybe you want to address uh the first one is remembrance that we are mortal uh, that we shall die and then the second was lack of accomplishment and then there's depression and then there's remorse and then there's anxiety maybe if there's any of those five maybe you just want to speak a little bit more about that N n nothing really except to say uh, um, and, and I know also in coming days Apostle uh, will deal with that either as a subtopic or a topic or in, as he speaks I'm thinking about how much depression is also getting a hold of Christians all over the world all over the world but it's such a tool of the enemy it's such a tool that the enemy is using is using to discourage people but we need to realize that that while it can have midlife lifestyle and mental aspects to it finally it's also very demonic yes it's also very demonic and it's time we learned and and, 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 and uh, like david to start speaking to ourselves speaking the word of god speaking out affirming and, and you know and, and, and the battles we have learned you know and, 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 and I do that quite a bit in my life because the enemy out there is seeking to bring Christians down through depression but it is the enemy thank you sir and maybe we can continue with the list yes sir number six regrets you see the man regretting how I wish I went to that other school instead of this one how I wish I married that other lady instead of this person. How I wish I got job in Shell or Chevron instead of how I regrets. When regrets set in, it destroys your creativity. It makes you not to be innovative anymore. Regrets kills the genius in you. It makes you drive your car looking at the rear mirror. <laughs> That's what regret does. Number seven is you wish time was taken back and given to you. You wish you could recover lost time. How I wish I was 15. How I wish I was 25 years old. How I wish I was 30. How I wish I was like you. That brings a lot of setback since you are not like him and you're already at this level can you utilize that level and do something great you know many years ago people used to come to our school to teach us but at some point they were no longer allowed to come to school when they come small boys that have become the leaders of the campus they should say sir your time had passed when you were on campus you should have done your best <laughs> so those men feel disgusted and feel very bad because they think God has called them to the youth and now the youth is rejecting them. What you do is make sure you are useful. The youth will come to you. Utilize your time, the time that you find yourself. The youth will look for you. Make yourself relevant to them. Again, the next one is turning. Some people turn to drinking. There are statistics of midlife crisis. They just turn. In fact, from there I want to say something very strong all the fantasies that people have had in their hearts that they've not had opportunity to express they express it at midlife crisis yes. 
they locate that the good opportunity to express it. They used to fantasize or desire to drink. They start practicing then as it's because of midlife crisis. <laughs> it will be a major excuse. Some will enter into drugs. They start take sniffing drugs so that they can be high and forget their sorrow. They start sniffing drugs so that they will forget their predicament or the disappointment that they didn't recover from. Remember yesterday I said, one of the things that makes people lapse into midlife crisis is when they, there is disappointment and they couldn't handle it well. Some will not get into sexual perversion. They will make sexual perversion a lifestyle. They will now run after, some of them will enter pornography or masturbation <clears throat> or bestiality. I went, I went somewhere to preach and somebody told me he used to sleep with an animal. Yes, sir. Pick a goat and have sex with the goat. Pick a dog and sleep with the dog. And just begin to try anything tryable. Why? Because he's lonely and depressed and he's not happy. Some will still be married but they've not entered into extramarital affairs because of midlife crisis. Some will go into outright adultery. <clears throat> and this happens when the relationship in the marriage is not updated and upgraded as they grew up. And they, you know, the gap widens apart and they are not able to bring themselves together again. When the communication in any marriage is not sweet, is broken down, midlife crisis sets in and then adultery is inevitable. Extramarital affair is inevitable. As you grow older and you are adjusting, it's better for you to discuss it with your spouse. Tell your spouse, that's the way I'm feeling that I don't used to feel before. So you can understand it. Sir, the, at 45, ladies enter into menopause. Many times, they may not feel like being intimate for too long a time anymore. They begin to look for what to do to, achieve, to create some achievement for themselves in life. Some of them get very bold get very confident they begin to do things in a way they've never done before many men are taking our back and they are not able to comprehend that so when they are left lonely at home they begin to look for alternatives some men now begin to drink some of them begin to party about and then that's when you see all these things come in all the vices begin to show up number 13 pleasures of this world going to a party locating where it is happening traveling to go and watch football in America. <coughs> <coughs> Travel. Sit down and just watch football. Right. And be shouting, Hey, it's a goal! That's all he wanted to do. It's part of me like me like crisis. <laughs> you know, going to watch a game. Going to watch cinema, to cinema with another child, lady. Some lecturers will start befriending the student so they can feel young again. When they befriend a the student, they'll say, don't call me your teacher, call me your boy. And then you see a small girl calling an elderly man, my boy, my boy. You say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's midlife crisis. He feels that he's still on stage. That's why this small girl likes him. You see them doing things to attract children to themselves. It's midlife crisis. Again, selfishness. Some people, it manifests itself. They become very selfish. Very self-centered. Everything must revolve around them. They are the done. They are the who is who. They are the one in charge. Everybody must worship them. Both male and female. Selfishness. One more point, so I can allow you, sir. Unreasonable. Some of them become very unreasonable. They don't reason with you anymore. They think you should reason the way they are reasoning. No matter what you say, say no. It is what I say that stands here. <laughs> they get very rigid. Imagine um, um, Ahitophel wanted everyone to think the way he was thinking. When they thought in another way, he went to commit suicide. This man called Judas wanted everyone to think his way. Let us sell this Jesus. <laughs> when it took another turn, he went to commit suicide. That's what happens. They get very rigid and unreasonable. The Bible says something about it. It says, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3, says, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. 
for all men have not faith but the lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil when you see people becoming uncommonly unreasonable check it it may be midlife crisis attacking them so what you do is calm them down and show them the light if it sometimes could be demonic you have to prayerfully lead them or break the spirit before they can see clearly because midlife crisis have power to be cloud someone that was what happened to Ahitophel until he hung himself he forgot that he was the wisest man in Israel in that generation he hung himself it has power to be cloud make you look like you are very useless or your time had passed or the world has left you when it be clouds you see people misbehave because they are not seeing clearly anymore yes sir <laughs> I just wanted to make two observations or so. Yes, sir. Talking about selfishness, I'm thinking how worse it gets in this very commercialized society, you know. Uh, the Christian life is a life of generosity. Yes. We care for each other, and particularly those of the household of faith. Uh, but in a world where, where everything is measured in shillings, dollars, and dollars. dollars. I mean, selfishness has really crept in. Yes. Even when people have, even when people have, and I'm thinking of uh, uh, on more of occasions when my wife has, my wife has said to me, I don't know if that has been selfish. Look, let's give out these shirts. You don't wear them. You don't wear them. Uh, at least I've had somebody who has, who tells, I have somebody who tells me that. But I'm thinking, thinking of somebody with a whole wardrobe, and yet they are very needy people around. You, you, that possessiveness when you look at it it's not even because you wear them it's not there is no reason why it could be one of those characteristics i don't think apostle you are saying that uh, watching football isn't right it's no but but it's 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 how how you watching who are you with if, if it's with your spouse or brothers and sisters and it's not time of when there's a meeting in church when there's a crusade when there's or something that should be happening what i was talking about is yeah. the person just wants to enjoy life enjoy yes waste money see let right. me eat the money now right that i'm still healthy and alive yeah. because i don't know what happens tomorrow mm. in fact there's a song they sang in nigeria <laughs> all the Nigerians are like, they know what I'm talking about. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Let me eat this life now. So the guy flies to America just to watch football to eat money. I know, I know. And, and there are things that that money can, <laughs> can do round about him. Because he's be clouded. Needed parents, needed relatives. Because he's be clouded that my time is up. Anything can happen. See, I'm already 45, 50. And I've not gone to America. Let us go and watch football. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make these two observations and, and just say what I'm feeling in my heart yes. for you, my brother and sister who is listening. This is helping you to, to assess what you're going through. You're being impacted with such knowledge. Yes, this will come, but it doesn't have to weigh you down or, destroy or weigh you, you out yes. or destroy you. And I'm thinking how powerful it is. Another thing that happens again is competition. Husband and wife start competing. When midlife crisis sets in, serious the competition. You see the wife, she says, "I am the CEO of this company." The husband also say, "I'm the CEO." <laughs> in fact, I'm your boss. He say, "No, you are not my boss." They will now. Nah, this is your company. This is my company. <laughs> competition. I have traveled to twelve nations. Even me, I've gone to fourteen. Then they will be competing to travel why midlife crisis they want to achieve or to each other the best is sit down and complement each other where is weak be the strength there where she's weak be the strength that's all that helps and you know i've talked about fantasy people want to play out their fantasy physically what they be fantasizing about they want it done before they die so when midlife said they think there will not be time for them to play it out that's when they derail and begin to do some weird things that they are not proud of because they just want to express their fantasies. So, sir, uh, you mentioned that it's a must that we have to go through transition. So it's a must we have to go through midlife crisis. Yes. And one of the things that we've talked about today is uh, 
about reacting with wisdom. And we had the story of Ahithophel when, uh, and also Judas, when their reaction, and even Cain, is about their reaction when they're going through uh, their beloved. So maybe you can just tell us uh, just a little bit more about how should we react. Also taking note that maybe most of the time people even don't know that they're going through midlife crisis. So how do they make that reaction so that they actually react with wisdom? There are two ways, two keys to reaction. Number one, pessimistic reaction. Number two, optimistic reaction. Many people react pessimistically because they think what happened to them is the end of life or because they are bitter. Bitterness be clouds. Bitterness makes you not to think fast. So because of bitterness, they react very badly, pessimistically, go negative completely. While some react optimistically, positive. Few people react optimistically. Many react pessimistically. Why? Because of bitterness. What I would advise is, whenever you are passing through some things, don't make up your mind don't conclude confront before you conclude it is your conclusion that determines your reaction don't conclude too fast confront before you conclude if you don't confront you might, your conclusion might be wrong your conclusion might lead you astray your conclusion might be very wrong so take it easy confront before you conclude don't go negative completely Take out time to think it out like he did. Take a holiday, disappear from the scene. Ruminate, reinvent yourself like we talked about yesterday. After reinventing yourself, you discover that you can still make it. That's not the end of your life. The future ahead is still brighter than what you had in the past. And then the Bible says something that encourages says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. He said, though your beginning was small, your latter end should greatly increase. You see, the bad part of the joy is like a shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. Your best days are still ahead. Moses showed that to us. David showed that to us. Joseph showed that to us in their life. So, losing hope is not the cure to midlife crisis. When you are passing the crisis, gather yourself again and make up your mind I will make it, sir. See, when I came to your new office, I get so excited because after all you passed through, you are still able to achieve that. We come to your own place, your new office, in the, you know, and things are still running. After all, then God helped him to plant branches here and there. After all he passed through. You know, somebody said, after all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through. I still have joy. Some people pass through some hard times and joy is deleted from their life. As long as you are still joyful, it is not over with you. The Bible says things dry up when joy with dust away from the heart and the life of men. Don't allow what you are passing through take joy away from you. And listen, you could be 60 years old or 70 years old and suddenly God switches on the latest chapter of your destiny and you become the happening thing on earth. And everybody begins to respect you. Smith Wigglesworth became a great preacher at old age. When he was still young, he was not even saved. Before he got saved, he got saved towards the period his wife died. The wife was one manifesting. The wife was Smith Wigglesworth was all over the world manifesting. By the time the wife died was when he now realized himself. He became a great preacher that we are reading about at old age. See, at old age, you are more mature to manifest. As you grow older, you are more to get that. You are able to achieve much with one stroke of the pen. Your influence becomes heavier. People look up to you and not look down on you. So value yourself. Old age is sweet. Don't lose hope. You know, before my father died, I remember I had to, I spoke to him sometime and I told him, I don't like what he's doing. He said, why? Because I noticed that he doesn't want to speak English anymore. Doesn't want to polish his hair anymore, just want to dress anyhow. I asked him why. I said, the life is gone. What am I waiting for? He said, well, who is looking at me? Said, eh? So I told him, sir, all the prayers you prayed for me are beginning to work and doors are beginning to open. We need you around the world. So if you cannot speak English, how will you enter aircraft? <laughs> the man was losing hope. 
He said it is true. Do you know? He gathered himself back. He even came to Nairobi before he, he, he died. He came to Nairobi, spent some time with us here. Now, what happened? I had to bring him back and make him know that it is not the end of life. Disappointment is not the end of life. Your old age is not the end of your life. Leave a legacy. Your latter end should be sweeter than your beginning. So don't give up. Don't lose up. Don't, don't lose hope. Don't throw in and then don't become helpless. And one of the greatest things that triggers midlife crisis is that feeling of helplessness. Feeling of helplessness. Don't feel helpless because God is still on the throne. Yes. Amen. We, we have a question online. And okay. if you are watching us online, you have a question, kindly just put it in the chat box and we'll be able to attend to it. So we have a question here, sir. And uh, she asks, so can we say that midlife crisis causes frustration, depression, if not handled? Yes. It makes you wonder what happened to you. <laughs> Why are you still at this junction? It makes you start looking at things you should not look at. You now look at your friends. They've all gone far and you are still here. All of them have five children. You are still struggling to have one. Something tells you it's over with you. You are going to 40 now, 45 menopause. Aye, your chapter has closed. You will see frustration. You will see depression. You will see anger. So, that's one of the things midlife crisis does. You need to, by, Friday, uh, by Sunday when I begin to talk about solution, you discover that it can be arrested. It can be arrested. And that's why we need to give our children home training. Make them strong. Let them go through what they have to go through at the tender age. So they do not go through something at adulthood and they think that is the end of life. Because of all I've gone through, I don't fear nothing anymore. When anything, I say, let it land. I'm ready for it. The other day, somebody was threatening me and said, um, um, if we did not do some certain paperwork, then he's going to... I said, stop that nonsense. The, your threat cannot affect me. I passed through worse threats, so you're only junior. So I said, now, nah, I give you an assignment. Your job is to go and rectify what was wrong and not here, come in here to threaten me. He was amazed at the way I handled it. Why? Because of what I've experienced. If I'm not, I was start shaking, I started begging. Uh-uh. So what you are passed through or what you are passing through should make you stronger in life. Let your children pass through what they ought to pass through so they can become strong and healthy to handle major things in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, sir. Amen. Uh, sir, maybe I don't know if you may have any parting shots. Uh, some wisdom bank from wisdom bank, but just any parting shots you may want to talk to our viewers. I, I just wanted to add to the frustration and depression. The other one that comes in is self-pity. <laughs> there is no room for self-pity. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of that. And it comes with a feeling of failure and that you have not succeeded and comparing it. It's something I've gone through and God has brought me out. I, I, I think myself, my parting shot is hang on to Sunday. Uh, you have not come to the end of it. I know by the end of it, uh, particularly tomorrow, I, I know Apostle, today you are dealing with characteristics, the negative. Yes. Tomorrow you'll be doing the positive. positive yes. Sir. And then I know there will be exactly coming to play. Just hang on there. But remember, there is hope. There is a way out. God is on the throne, even in your case, wherever you are. Amen. Going through midlife crisis, going through depression frustration and all that you're going through in jesus name amen, amen. the bible says there's hope for a tree though it be cut down yet with this sprout again at the smell of water it will become a full-blown tree one more time amen. i want us to pray for everyone passing through different crises presently releasing the anointing on them but you before we pray for you make up your mind like he has said don't give up hang on there hold on help is on the way we release the anointing on you now. Please let's stretch our hands towards everybody watching us now. We decree right now every form of midlife crisis that the enemy have hijacked to enter into your life to now bring sorrow to make you live a bitter life. Yeah. We command them to expire now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything on earth has expiry date, including the earth. This earth has expiry date. 
one day this earth will melt but with fervent heat that is the expiry date of the earth therefore every problem on earth also have expiry date i command every problem besieging you every problem attacking you every issue that's making you not to feel making you feel like you have not achieved yeah. anything i command the fire of god to consume them right now oh, yeah. in the mighty name of jesus yeah. christ yeah. i declare and decree you are not going down Amen. the devil is not taking you down by this Amen. the enemy will not have you in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. i command the force of the holy ghost to push you out Amen. and you bounce out of this depression Amen. bounce out of this pain Amen. bounce out of this attack Amen. bounce out of this negative season Amen. in the mighty name of jesus christ I bind the spirit of pessimism. I command that spirit to get out of you. Amen. I bind the spirit of self-pity. I command it to get out of you. Amen. I bind the spirit of depression and frustration. I command it to get out of you. Amen. I bind the spirit of bitterness. I command it to get out of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are the called according to his purpose i command everything that you have passed through to become a raw material for god to take you to your next chapter Amen. for god to take you to your next level Amen. in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. you will not be put to shame you are not going down this way Amen. and not a door of escape is made for you Amen. i see you rising up Amen. for men 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 say there's a Amen. casting down you will say there's a lifting up Amen. i command the lifting up in your life Amen enjoy a lifting up today amen. in the name of jesus christ amen, amen. thank you father thank you. in jesus name we pray amen. amen amen by sunday we'll be capping this up but tomorrow is going to be heavy we're going to talk about the characteristics of midlife crisis the positive characteristics because there are some aspects of midlife crisis that is good that makes you achieve what you will never have achieved if you never woke up by saturday we'll get into the different dimensions there are six to seven dimensions of midlife crisis levels it operates from so we'll get into it and on sunday we'll get into the cure total cure in the first segment i'll deal with a segment of it in the second service again i'll do it and then the evening will cap it up by the grace of god it will be sweet and awesome please connect with us don't disconnect now it's time for you to give your offerings whatever you are give your offerings you can use the M-Pesa pay bill 821430. M-Pesa pay bill number 821430. Can you project the M-Pesa pay bill number, not this? Uh, God bless you. Project, yeah. Uh, so use the pay bill number 821430. Or if you're outside Africa, you're outside Kenya, you can use the uh, Send Wave app and send to us. And it will get to us on that phone number that you can see there. If you need the account of the church, you see it there. The account number is there. You can use it. Take a photograph of it. Send your tithe. Send your seed. It is your reasonable service. Please do it. Don't say, I will do it tomorrow. Ah, I will do it later when I relax. Uh -uh. Do it immediately. The service is winding up. Let the blessings of God follow you. But say the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich and added no sorrow. I release that blessing upon you. I decree in the name of Jesus, you prosper explosively and extensively the grace of god is made available to you you will never be a beggar i decree you will swim in surplus you will have more than enough for the rest of your life in the mighty name of jesus you will never beg for anything good the lord god almighty puts his breath upon everything he had given to you it will not be eaten by the devourer in the mighty name of jesus christ by the time we meet again tomorrow you shall have testimonies and the lord god almighty will cause your destiny to be a wealthy one so shall it be in jesus name we pray amen amen i want you to share the video tell somebody what is going on invite somebody to join you to be a watch party with you tomorrow as we get to another dimension of midlife crisis if you have any question please send them to us so it can be answered so you can understand what it is in case you are passing through anything and you need counsel you are free to contact us and then we can counsel you both on the spiritual aspect and also from experience because our elder is here who had passed through a lot of things in life and we can counsel you so that you can get the best information that will help you to come out of the pit so nobody will pity you anymore the lord god almighty bless you but drawing the curtain here today so we can now put ourselves together for tomorrow and we know it will be more interesting tomorrow by the grace of god and therefore we want to share the grace in fellowship as we now wave you goodbye all right let's share the grace 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good night. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you.